The Colorado Avalanche are Stanley Cup champions, and heading into next season, that means what's most important is what's on the ice in the NHL trying to get them to win again. However, that doesn't mean that you can completely neglect the prospect system. This is the Avs Prospect Pyramid. <laughs> Well, that intro is never going to get old. As always, shout out to Steve Dangle for championing this concept of looking at prospects for a team. I think it's a very good way to look at it as a whole instead of getting too stuck in the minutia of which prospect is the sixth or seventh best in a system and trying to rank them that way. A couple of ground rules here for my pyramid. All players in this are 24 or younger and must be eligible to win the Calder. The only significant player that may knock out of this that you could maybe consider a prospect is Mikhail Maltsev. And this pyramid starts with a reality for the Colorado Avalanche and many Stanley Cup caliber teams. That tip-top part of the pyramid? The Avs don't have a prospect of that caliber in their system. They just don't. I'm not saying it's impossible that someone in their system could get up to that elite level, but they would be exceeding expectations if they did so. Realistically, you cannot expect any prospect in the Avs system to become a top-line player or a top defensive pairing or even a starting goaltender today. There were probably arguments to be made for Justin Barron or maybe even Drew Hellison, but the Avs decided to trade them out. Obviously worth it, the moves they made helped them win a Stanley Cup, so no complaints, but they just don't have that true top, top end piece. Despite that, I still do think they have solid pieces in the middle of their pyramid as we move on to the second tier. I have three players in this tier for the Avs, Sean Barons, Ben Myers, and Oscar Olauson. Personally, I believe Barons to be the number one there, the best of the three, but it doesn't really matter. Take your pick, whichever one you like there. All of these are in the same tier of prospect. Barron's had a fantastic D plus one in the NCAA, being a not quite point per game defenseman as a freshman with the eventual national champions in DU. He dropped into that team and immediately played effective top four important minutes for them and proved that he can do it on both ends of the ice. This is not common at all for a freshman to be able to drop in and do that. He also shows a tenacity that is borderline necessary for players to be making the NHL, especially in a system like the Avs. While there is no doubt that Barons is on the smaller side, he understands how to play even with that and is able to be effective. The Avs defense is obviously fairly stacked at the moment and it may not be the easiest to break into, but by the time Barons has graduated from college to professional hockey and gets a year of AHL under his belt, that may look a little bit different. Next up, you have Ben Myers, which is kind of a unique case on this list. Myers is very, very likely to be a full-time NHLer in the coming season. He has also found money for the Avalanche as a college UFA signing during last season. He jumped directly into the NHL and was effective immediately. At age 23, he is a little bit older to be a professional rookie, but had an extremely effective college career and can expect to be a staple in the Avs' bottom six at center. How he will fully transition to the professional game is still yet to be seen, but it's clear that the Avalanche are very, very high on him and are going to give him every opportunity to succeed at the NHL level. Where Meyer's ceiling ends up isn't exactly clear. The reason he's ranked this high is because of his proximity to the NHL. He's ready to have an immediate impact at that level this season. And third on this list, you have Oscar Olauson. I did a full video on him already. If you want to go in-depth on him, you can find a link to that in the description of the video. If you want the short version, suffice to say he had a good but not great D plus one in Canadian juniors. Realistically, I think for these three prospects, the Avs need to get NHL games out of them. If they fail to do that, it will be a failure of the system. Not only that, but for the Avs to keep competitive in the depth of their lineup, they're going to need their ELCs to be effective players as they get tighter to the cap and have to do things like overpay players because of the cup tax. So really those three are the key prospects in the AV system right now, but the third tier is also quite important. This tier includes Sampo Ranta, Colby Ambrosio, Martin Kaut, Jean-Luc Foodie, and Eustace Ananen. The left side is two interesting cases. For Ranta, he got 10 games at the start of last season in the NHL and frankly did nothing with them. After going back down to the AHL, his season was a bit of a disappointment where he struggled to produce at times. 
However, he also battled through some injuries there, and if we're being realistic, no doubt the Avs asked him to work on parts of his game that weren't his offense. So the hope is he was working hard on those things to get them up to an acceptable level, and this year he can turn that offense back on and continue being an effective hockey player, much like he was in college. It's clear the Avs like Ranta, they gave him the NHL opportunity, but there are parts of his game, mostly on the IQ side, that have to get better for him to really make it in the NHL. You also have Martin Kaut, who has been in the organization now for a while and has yet to really break into the NHL sphere. Now, I will die on the hill that Martin Kaut is an NHL caliber player, but it's gotta happen now or never for it to be in Colorado. While I don't think the Avalanche have managed his development particularly well, he has continued to improve his game at the AHL level to the point where he really doesn't have anything left to learn there. He's extremely solid positionally and defensively and has shown enough offense that he is just too good for the AHL in my opinion. Of his three real call-up opportunities, his first one was extremely successful, and the other two, he struggled a bit at times, but was still functional. Unfortunately, some injuries did set him back as well, but I think it's time for him to make a full-time NHL job. With that being said, the Avs roster is pretty tight at the moment. Bringing back some of the depth veterans they did are going to make it hard for Kaut to get in. Again, I think he's an NHLer, but it just might not be with Colorado. On the other side, you have two players that are a little bit younger. First, Colby Ambrosio just finished his sophomore season at Boston University. As far as archetype is concerned, he is a perfect fit for Colorado. A little bit smaller, but a very, very good skater and has that willingness to go to the dirty areas, work hard, and do what needs to be done. He definitely relies more on his shot than his playmaking ability to be offensively productive, but it is a good shot. For most of the year, he settled into Boston's middle six and mostly third line duties, so there was not a ton of opportunity there for him, but as he moves into his junior year, you can expect more TOI and a big opportunity for him to prove himself and potentially set himself up for a contract with the Avs. Probably a little bit further to go to an NHL job than the other players on this list, but for a third round pick, he is sitting in a pretty solid spot. Not all that different than the position Sampo Ranta was in a couple of years ago. Then you have another unique case with Jean-Luc Foudy. Just 20 years old, but because of the pandemic, he has played the last two years at the AHL level. Being so young, he has still managed to carve out a role for himself there and really started to succeed in the last year of the AHL playoffs. Another fantastic skater, but much more of a playmaker compared to someone like Ambrosio, Foody has settled in very, very nicely to pro hockey. While the NHL probably isn't destined for him this season, it's still something that two years from now you should be looking at. If he can take what he's learned as a teenager in professional hockey and transition that into being a very effective player in the AHL this season, that could be the exact push that he needs. Outside of Cal, you'll see that everyone in this section is a mid-round pick. These are the types of things the Avs need to get right to stay on top of the league. We end this up with Eustace Annanen, the biggest goalie prospect in the Avs system. Obviously does have a couple of NHL games under his belt already because of the desperation when the Avs had injured goaltenders earlier and had a bit of an up and down season at the AHL level this year, but really found his game in the playoffs where he played exceptionally for the Eagles, helping push them to a conference finals matchup. I've never been a goalie guy and I'm not going to try and make predictions on what his ceiling and what his floor are, but at minimum, you would hope that over the next year, he solidly becomes the Avs number three and is the call up for any goalie injury in the future. While all of these players likely won't be NHLers, certainly not for the Avs, you would like to get at least a couple of them in the NHL and being effective players. It's critical, again, for the Avs that some of these prospects graduate and can be effective players for them on the cheap. When you combine this with the second tier, that is eight players that are pretty solid prospects for Colorado. Nothing to turn your nose up at, but it's not a ton and none of it is extremely high end. This key core of the prospect pool is where they need success and then from here down, it's things that they're just hoping work out. The fourth tier of the pyramid has Matt Steinberg, Shane Bowers, Danila Zoravlyov, Alex Bokaj, and Andre Bujalski. Steinberg is the Avs' most improved prospect from last season, 
going from kind of a total mystery to a breakout star in the NCAA. As over a point per game player, he was one of the most productive forwards in the entire league. And playing for Cornell, he went up against maybe not the best competition in the world, but certainly some quality hockey around Ivy League schools. At age 21, because of the pandemic, Steinberg still has two more years of college eligibility left, so there is still some rope to burn on this prospect. Heading into this next season, if he can prove that last year wasn't just a bit of an aberration and more who he is at the NCAA level, then you can start talking about an NHL contract. The path here is likely still a long way to go, but a player with a good shot and willing to play a rough physical game with good size is something that the Avs do not have a lot of in their system. His NHL ceiling is much more likely that of a role player than anything even pushing towards the top six, but those are key pieces too. Honestly, for a pick that was as questionable as it was when the Avs made it, if they get anything out of him, that's an absolute win. Next up, you have Shane Bowers, and it's a really interesting case study when you compare Shane Bowers and Martin Kaut. Neither player has really broken into the NHL yet. Both are players, I believe, that are NHL caliber, and both of them have had significantly different experiences so far in pro hockey. Bowers has not gotten any of the opportunity that Count has at the NHL level, and has struggled significantly more at the AHL level. Now, some of that is injury and things out of his control, but we've also seen him struggle to produce effectively at the AHL level. And that has kind of always been the knock on Bowers. When he was drafted, the knock was what is his offensive ceiling. On the defensive side, he's always been a very solid player, and he's turned himself into a very good skater, too. So the question is, how does Bowers get an opportunity to be a defensive player in the NHL? And at this point, I think the reality might be he's not going to get that opportunity with Colorado. While I believe there might still be some time for Kaut to make it work here, I think Bauer's time might just be up. Whatever it is the Avs want to see out of him to give him that NHL shot, they just haven't seen it. Again, I put him in this fourth tier because I think he can be an NHLer. I think you will see him play NHL games at some point. So Ravyov is an interesting one. Being a Russian player, he did play the last few years in the KHL and had some good and some okay seasons over there. There were some questions about his ability to hold up as an NHL caliber player, and we'll have to see what he does on North American ice with the AHL this year before anything can really be decided. When it comes to Russian players, getting them over to North America is a huge step, and that's why you've seen him move up a little bit on this list. Combine that with the fact that he has defensive prospect pool is extremely thin, and Arguably, Zoravlyov is their second best defensive prospect. Still a lot left to prove. This year is going to be critical in his future in North America. He has to do well in the AHL to prove he could maybe be promoted to that next level. But having him in North America is a good first step. Bokaj just finished his first year in the AHL like many of these players, and while he did okay, it felt a little bit lacking for someone who was touted as having an NHL caliber shot. Just four goals in 40 regular season games left you wanting a little bit more, and there are some question marks around his defensive ability and his ability to play off the puck and get himself open. While his skating has gotten better, I still don't think it's very good, and at times you see him struggle to make the correct decisions. With that being said, he did have a very productive AHL playoffs with 5 points in 8 games, including 2 goals, another step that you'd like to see. With 2 years left on his ELC deal, he needs to establish himself as a more effective offensive player this year in the AHL, and then you can go from there. Finally, in this tier, you have Andre Bujalski. This is kind of a total wild card of a player. Drafted as an overager by the Avalanche last draft, he came into this season to play in the NCAA and suffered a season-ending injury three games into the season, and you didn't see him again. Build as a big power forward who can skate, there's some excitement there, but you just have no idea who this guy is as a player at the NCAA level right now. His path to the NHL is probably still a good ways off, and he's already aging into his 20s. So this is either going to be a player that's breaking into the NHL at the age of 24 or 25, or could be someone that tumbles down this list very quickly, depending on this season. This is kind of where you can draw a line under it with this prospect pool. 
all of these players, you can see the path to the NHL for them. You can understand it. They may not be able to push all the way down that path, but it's not complicated to see how they get there. As we move into the fifth and sixth tiers, those paths start to get pretty long and windy. In the fifth tier, you have Chris Romain, Nikolai Kovalenko, Ivan Zhigalov, and Trent Minor. Romain and Zhigalov were the sixth and seventh round picks for the Avs in this last draft class. The only two picks they had in the entire class, so two late rounders that they kind of just took flyers on. Romain, a defenseman who played very, very well at the Canadian High School Academy level, but it's the Canadian High School Academy level, so hard to take a ton from that. Headed to the USHL next year and then NCAA after that, just from the get-go, you're already looking at a four-year path to professional hockey for Romain, so it's going to take a while. Zhigalov, a goalie out of the QMJHL, had an okay-ish season by the statistics this year. Again, I'm not a goalie guy. I'm not going to make too many assumptions here, but a long way to go for him to even earn a contract with the Avs. And given that with a goaltender in Canadian junior hockey. You only have two years to make that decision. He's going to have to make some progress quickly. Kovalenko is one that might be a little bit disappointing this far down the list to people. From his skill level, he absolutely could be a couple tiers higher. But the fact is, he's still in Russia, and there have been no indications of him coming over yet to North America. If he does come over to North America, he could pretty easily make it to the NHL level. I don't think it would be that difficult. But... That hill is just so hard to climb that it's hard to put him any higher than this until that happens. And then you have Trent Miner, the other goaltender in the AV system at this point. Miner put together a solid ECHL season last year. I wouldn't say great, but good, including a very good playoffs where he posted a 920 save percentage and filled in admirably in the few games he got at the AHL level. That is a solid year for a goaltender on his ELC, but the reality of the AVS organization is there are two goaltenders in the AHL ahead of him, being Eustace Ananen and Jonas Johansson. It's going to be difficult for him to find upward mobility in the Avs organization, and he's going to have to play incredibly well at the ECHL level to earn it. Is there a path there? Maybe, but it's going to be tough to do. And finally, you have the last tier, which consists of everybody else, basically. The reality is, I do not see a path to an NHL player for anyone on this tier. It's not impossible that they prove me wrong. I'm wrong all of the time, but it's going to be a very, very difficult path for them to just get a contract with the Avs, let alone break into the NHL. These are players that if they carve out an AHL career for themselves, they should be happy. And that is the Avs prospect pyramid for this season. Will we see it change? Probably. Will it be with some graduations? I hope so, but more realistically, don't be surprised if you see a couple more of these pieces get traded away for NHL help. There is no doubt that the Avs prospect pool is thinner than it has been in the last previous few years, but it still has a solid central core. That is the end of this prospect pyramid video. Thank you for watching. Head on over to thednvr.com for all of our coverage. I am Rudo, and little by little, we're adding stuff to the studio.